A few years ago I made this ugly wood bending iron with an electric charcoal starter as the heat source. The charcoal starter was too big to get inside the aluminum tube but I found I could squeeze it in a vise and bend it however I wanted to without a problem. This time I'm making a better mounting system and using a 250 watt cartridge heater for my heat source. Hi, I'm Paul. This is OpenWoodShop.com and i just like to thank the Academy for this. Ah! Before I get started, I thought you might want to join me for an autopsy in progress. Far from being a delicate piece of electronics, I'm a little curious as to why the charcoal starter still worked, even after squishing and mangling it to get it into the tube. Inside of the tube on both of the ends is a small threaded rod and a nut to attach the electrical cord to. As I cut further up the tube, I found that the entire tube is filled with a white insulation and there's a threaded rod about six inches long on each end and made of steel. At the other end of the rod is where the coiled nichrome wire begins and that's about all there is to it. I admit for the princely sum of twelve dollars that I paid for this thing something inside of me wanted it to be a little more complicated. The heating element I'm using this time is a cartridge heater. It's a tip from Chris at Highline Guitars who a few years back made one this way. So my game plan here is to reuse the old pipe, attach a top cap to it, stuff it full of aluminum foil, keep it all in with a bottom cap, drill a 5 16 inch hole to accept the cartridge heater, and mount it in a box. And that's about it. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe. After sawing off a piece of quarter inch aluminum plate, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the middle to accept the 3 8 inch nut and bolt. This lets me hold it in the three jaw chuck on the lathe. The end of the bolt has been center drilled to accept the live center and to help keep it all stable and aligned. If you were to just turn the shank of the bolt around and put it into the chuck, once you started the lathe up, the nut would unscrew. I'm making two of these discs right now. One will go inside the pipe and the other larger one on top of the pipe. They're turned to the proper diameter and the 3 8 inch holes are enlarged to one half inch holes and threaded. A length of half inch aluminum rod also gets threads and is screwed into the two plates. This helps join the plates together but more importantly its smaller diameter is for making tighter bends. Holes are drilled in from the side of the pipe and into the edge of the smaller disc and then threaded. This holds the top assembly into place. I'm not welding it because I don't have a welder. I could have listened to my wife and gotten that TIG welder, but then I woke up. The next step is to pack, and I mean really pack, aluminum foil into the pipe. I got two rolls from the dollar store and completely used both of them. A third aluminum disc is made and goes into the bottom to keep the aluminum foil from falling out. It gets a half inch hole too, so that I can drill a 5 16 inch hole into the aluminum foil and insert the cartridge heater. The hole was 5 inches deep and it was kind of hard to drill, even with a new drill. What's more is I had to auger the hole out to make it slightly bigger. I wanted the carriage heater to slip in and out easier. The next thing to do is to make the box. A simple box with finger joints on top for strength and dados on the bottom to make it easy to take apart so that I can access the pipe and the electronics because I never get anything right the first time. Because of the heat I left the sides open. Speaking of not getting things right the first time, I started by using a soldering mat for insulation. Never use a cigarette lighter to light a torch unless you want to take the chance of hitting it with the torch and having it blow up in your hand or whatever. Although the mat didn't burn, it still got plenty hot and wound up scorching the wood. So I cut the wood away from the pipe and then wrapped the pipe mount brackets with some mat and Teflon tape. Better, maybe even usable perhaps, but you know. Finally, I've added tiles to the mix. This seems to be the best heat shield yet, but I always welcome suggestions in the comments. It tops out at about 500 degrees, but I'll be using it at about 350. I haven't done anything real yet, just testing. You might have noticed I cut a groove in the side of the pipe. This is for those small pieces and it seems to work okay. 
So if you're interested, this shouldn't be a problem to make. You don't need a lathe. Wood bending is a great tool to add to your repertoire and hopefully you've learned as much about what not to do as what to do. And as usual, thanks for following me around the shop and now go make something. <laughs>